Hi everyone, welcome back to Awful Deco. Today we are making a hollow ocean wall art piece. So this is the piece that we're making. It has a really pretty hollow effect for the ocean. And we added some little sea turtles, super cute. I will show you exactly how I prepped the board with the hollow effect, how I added the sea turtles and the waves. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is prep our surface. We have a 12 by 12 piece of wood here. I had a 4x8 wood panel cut to size for a different project, but you can search for wood panels on Amazon or other craft stores. For the hollow effect, I am using holographic transfer foil. I've seen other artists use adhesive vinyl, and we will try that too, but I had foil on hand already, so why not test this out? And the true reason is I don't want to spend more money on extra supplies at the moment. To adhere the foil onto the wood surface, we will use this Craft Bond spray adhesive. I got this spray from Walmart. We will spray this onto the foil and stick it to the board that we're working with. This is what the back of the foil looks like. It's silver and it looks like it has the hollow effect as well. We will use a scissor to cut the amount of foil we need. And the foil is a little bit thin and flimsy so I will try my best to keep it steady. My scissors got stuck while I was cutting the foil, so I left some imperfections, but I just thought we'll cover it with sand or waves, so it'll be okay. For the spray, the instructions on the can says to shake it for a minute, so I did that off camera, and then I'm spraying to cover the entire foil. Okay, so what are these Spots, you may be wondering. I don't know, but in my mind this already doesn't look too good. It seems like the spray makes the foil a little splotchy. Maybe I spray too much glue in certain areas, but I just told myself it'll be okay. We'll cover that up with waves too. I am using a squeegee to press the foil onto the board to make sure that it's completely flat. Look at that hollow effect on the board. The rainbows from it, it's so pretty. I already see a beautiful ocean on this. Ignore the spots, but keep that in mind if you're going to attempt this project. Now we will trim off the extra foil from the edge of the board. I forgot that the foil is tricky to work with, for me at least, and so I added some imperfect areas. It feels like some parts are not completely sticking to the wood, especially along the edges, but we'll figure that out. We prepped the front of the board, now it's time to prep the back. Resin is going to drip over the sides, so we are going to line the back edges with frog tape. That way, the resin drips will cure on the tape and come off with the tape when we peel the tape off. This is so sanding and cleaning up the back won't be too much work after. In our previous ocean art video, we used blue painter's tape and that worked great too. I heard the frog tape was better so that's why I just wanted to try it out. You can also tape the sides so the ocean design is just the front of your board. I like to have it flow down the sides as well so that's why I just taped the back. We will snip off any excess tape and then head off to pour the first layer. Now we are in the resin room and this is right after we just applied the hollow foil. I am setting some cups down so I can set the board at a height away from the table. 
That way the board will not be sitting in a pool of resin drips because resin will drip over the sides. I place my cups in all four corners for more stability. The cups that I am using are just regular cups that I use for mixing resin, nothing special. You just want to make sure that your surface is stable and leveled. For the resin, we are using Totobolt's tabletop resin. This is what the resin looks like, and I will link it in the description as well. I am using a measuring cup from Pixis Creative. The tabletop is a one-to-one -one resin, so we will be using the measurements on the cup and pouring about 8 ounces of resin total. We are mixing with a plastic mixing stick to reduce the amount of bubbles, and if you purchase the resin through my link, you can save a little bit on the resin as well. When we mix our resin, mix slow and steady to reduce the amount of bubbles in your mixture. I will start off mixing in real time, then speed it up to save us some time. But here you can see that this is how slow I am mixing. The mixing is generally about 5 minutes or so, and don't rush this step because properly mixing the resin is probably the most important step. When we mix our resin, make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom you don't want any unmixed resin. You will know when your resin is completely mixed when there are no streaks or fogginess when you're mixing. You will notice how it started off clear when I measured out the two parts, then it turned foggy as I'm mixing, and then it will turn clear again when we finish mixing. Well, it'll be clear with bubbles because the act of mixing introduces bubbles to the mixture, but we will be able to pop the bubbles with a heat gun. And since we're using this resin for coating the board, the layers will be thin as well, so the bubbles will float to the top easily. You'll notice in our final piece that there are not too many bubbles. Now that we're done mixing, we will add our sea creatures. Because the hollow design is our base and it is already the blue that I want, I will not be adding a color layer, I will just be doing two layers of white waves. I usually put my sea creatures, if I am using them, in between two layers of waves or after the color layer. These are vinyl sea creatures and I ended up choosing the turtles. They are like stickers so I just stick them onto where I want them. I purchased these vinyl sea creatures from another artist but they no longer offer it, you can check on Etsy to see if there are other sellers for vinyl sea creatures. Time to mix the white for our waves. I will separate the resin into a smaller measuring cup and this is a medicine cup since I don't need that much white. We are using Casting Crafts Opaque White Pigment. Pour a little bit of our mixed resin into the cup, drop some white pigments in, and then mix it completely. I think I put about 10 drops in this amount. It's about 1 ounce of resin. If you want it more opaque, you could use a little more white pigment or less if you want it less opaque. I wouldn't go too much more though because too much pigment can cause your resin to not cure properly. We will also be adding some sand. Here is my container of sand from Rio, so that's why there's some Portuguese on this bottle. This is the last of it and some of it is going to be used for this beautiful ocean piece. Like the white, pour some of the mixed clear resin into another cup, add the sand, and mix. Now that we have all the resin mixtures we need, the white, the sand, and the clear, we're ready to pour. First, we're going to lay down our sand. That way, we have an idea of where the beach part ends and where the waves begin. Then we will coat the entire board with the clear and then do the waves.
For my waist, I like to do several thin lines of white as opposed to one thick line or thicker lines. The more random the lines, the more natural the waves will look. It also gives a little bit of extra depth with overlapping waves in one layer. When the white lines are how we like it, we use a heat gun to push the white. A tip for this is to angle the heat gun to push the waves from the bottom to the top of the board. From my experience at least. These cells will form over time so don't worry if you're not seeing too many cells right now. The second layer will add a lot more as well. Now I'm going around the sides of the board with the extra resin to evenly coat the edge of the board. Usually resin doesn't drip around the entire edge for me, only some parts and that would create bumps where the drips occur. That's because I don't pour a lot of resin, like I don't over pour, I pour just enough for my board. Going around the edge with resin will help even out the sides. I think most artists like to tape the sides as well and I might do that next time because it does look a bit cleaner. But as I'm going around the edges, you'll notice that the cells in my waves were forming and I'm, I wasn't doing anything with the waves. Now I am and I'm adding more waves. But that's what I meant when I say the cells will form over time. Now I'm done, I won't touch this piece anymore. We're going to let this layer harden about 12 hours later now and this is what it looks like. Look at that hollow and look at those waves. I'm super excited to finish up this piece. For the second layer, we're going to repeat the wave making process. We have our total tabletop resin mixed up already. Again, the materials will be linked in the description. We are going to mix up our white pigment, coat the entire board with clear. You can also add sand again to this layer if you want to. Then we're going to add our waves. For the waves, we draw our lines with the white pigment and then we'll use a heat gun to push the white. Now I'm going around the sides of my board to even out the resin drips. Pay very close attention to the cells forming as I am doing this. When I'm done with this piece, I will let it fully cure at least 24 hours and then we'll take this outside to see the results. You are about to be mesmerized by the hollow. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm literally obsessed with this. Look at all the rainbows that's popping up. It shifts at different angles and it's just so eye-catching. Any imperfections we saw in the beginning with placing our foils, they're all covered up and it's just a beautiful ocean art now. I'm so amazed with this and I can't believe I made this. 
Let me know what you think about this piece in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed making this ocean piece with me. As always, all of my artwork that we make here is available on my website if you want to take it home. And if you enjoyed this process video, please like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments below what you want to see next. I'll see you next time.